Our lives are filled with distractions. Email, Twitter, texting, we're constantly connected to technology, rarely alone with just our thoughts, which is probably why there's a growing movement in America to train people to get around the stresses of daily life. It's a practice called mindfulness, and it basically means being aware of your thoughts, physical sensations, and surroundings. Tonight, we'll introduce you to the man who's largely responsible for mindfulness gaining traction. His name is John Kabat-Zinn, and he thinks mindfulness is the answer for people who are so overwhelmed by life, they feel they aren't really living at all. The story will continue in a moment. There are a lot of different ways to talk about mindfulness, but what it really means is uh, awareness. Is it being present? It is being present. That's exactly what it is. I don't feel I'm very present in each moment. I feel like every moment I'm either thinking about something that's coming down the road or something that's been in the past. So ultimately, all this preparing is for what? For the next moment, like the last moment, like, and then we're dead. So in a certain way, <laughs> are we depressing. going to experience while we're still alive? We're only alive now. John Kabat-Zinn is an MIT-trained scientist who's been practicing mindfulness for 47 years. Back in 1979, he started teaching mindfulness through meditation to people suffering from chronic pain and illness. That program is now used in more than 700 hospitals worldwide. So how can you be mindful in your daily life? When your alarm goes off and you jump out of bed, what is the nature of the mind in that moment? Are you already like, oh my God, your calendar pops into your mind and you're driven already? Or can you take a moment and just lie in bed and just feel your body breathing and remember, oh yeah, brand new day and I'm still alive. So I get out of bed with awareness, brush my teeth with awareness. When you're in the shower next time, check and see if you're in the shower. <laughs> what do you mean check and see if you're in the shower? Well, you may not be. You may be in your first meeting at work. You may have 50 people in the shower with you. Kabat-Zinn says mindfulness takes practice. A lot of people start with a training class to learn how to meditate. He agreed to teach us at a weekend retreat on a remote mountaintop in Northern California. When we arrived, we were told there'd be no television to watch, no internet, not even an alarm clock. So I'm checking in. The retreat was full of professionals, neuroscientists, business leaders, Silicon Valley executives. Before we began, we all had to surrender our last ties to the outside world. Put your devices in the basket, you know. I'm contributing my MacBook Air and my uh, iPhone, happily. <laughs> I wasn't exactly happy to give up my phone. I usually check emails several times an hour. So let's take a few minutes and just settle into a, an erect and dignified posture. The retreat lasted three days, and most of that time was spent just sitting there, silently meditating, with occasional guidance from Kabat-Zinn. There's no place to go. There's nothing to do. We're just asking you to sit and know that you're sitting. Knowing that you're sitting may sound simple. Turns out it's not. The mind constantly wanders. The mind has a life of its own. It goes here and there. To not get lost in thought, Kabat-Zinn recommended focusing on the sensation of breathing in and out. Can we actually ride with full awareness on the waves of the breath at the belly, at the nostrils, in the chest, and then simply rest here in awareness? Resting in awareness is one of those phrases used a lot by people who practice mindfulness. But when I tried to do it, it wasn't restful, and I worried I wasn't doing it right. I kept thinking about work. I miss my cell phone. <laughs> I'm not alone. Having a little withdrawal. I mean, nothing. <laughs> Kabat Zinn, who's written 10 books on mindfulness and led nearly 100 retreats, describes meditation as a mental workout. The mind wanders away from the breath, and then you gently and non-judgmentally just bring it back. So it's okay Matter that the mind drifts away, but you just bring it back. It's the nature of the mind to drift away. The mind is like the Pacific Ocean. It waves. And mindfulness has been shown to drop underneath the waves. If you drop underneath the agitation in the mind into your breath, deep enough calmness, gentle undulations. 
After hours of meditating and 30-minute sessions, it does get easier. Those waves of thought Kabat-Zinn described, they're still there, but you get less distracted by them. At breakfast, we spent time relearning some of the very basic things in life, including how to eat food. Eating a meal in complete silence is a little awkward, but without conversation as a distraction, you taste more and eat less. This is something called walking meditation. The goal is to learn to be aware of each and every movement and feeling. I know it seems ridiculous, but it does change the way you experience walking. The Zen people from ancient China, when you're walking, just walk. It turns out to be the hardest thing. <laughs> That's when an ancient you're walking, saying. just walk. When you're eating, just eat. Not from the TV, not with the newspaper. It turns out that's huge. Congressman Tim Ryan, an Ohio Democrat, says mindfulness might look a lot like nothing, but he really believes it can change America for the better. He attended his first meditation retreat in 2008, just days after winning a grueling re-election campaign. But being mindful at a retreat is one thing. We wondered if back in Washington, Congressman Ryan ever worries about how all this looks. Well, you know, I can see myself in high school going, whoa, stay away from those guys. So how do you use it here on Capitol Hill? <laughs> I'm on the budget committee, for example. There's a lot of conflict, and people say things that get you ramped up. I find myself, as my body clinches up when somebody says something that I know is wrong or I, I want to catch them in a lie or whatever, that just calm down when it's your turn. You make your point. Hey, man. You don't hear the words calm and Congress together very often, but Ryan is trying to change that. He hosts weekly meditation sessions open to members and staff of both parties. Now shifting the attention to take in the entire body. Have you gotten any Republican congressmen in to meditate with you yet? No. <laughs> We're working on it. He's written a book about mindfulness and obtained a million dollars of federal funding to teach it to school children in his Ohio district. I feel like we're calm right now. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've seen it transform classrooms. I've seen it heal veterans. I've seen what it does to individuals who have really high chronic levels of stress and how it has helped their body heal itself. I wouldn't be willing to stick my neck out this far if I didn't think this is the thing that can really help shift the country. To some people, though, this may sound like kind of new age gobbledygook. There's so many different compelling studies that are showing that this is not new age gobbledygook. This is potentially transformative of our health and well-being psychologically as well as physically. It can be useful for anxiety, depression, stress reduction. There have been a number of studies that show mindfulness can lead to those benefits, as well as improvements in memory and attention. And at the University of Massachusetts, Judson Brewer, a psychiatrist and neuroscientist, uses mindfulness to treat addiction. This is just the next generation of exercise. We've got the physical you know, exercise components uh, down, and now it's about working out how can we actually train our minds. Dr. Brewer is trying to understand how mindfulness can alter the functioning of the brain. He uses a cap lined with 128 electrodes. We're going to start filling each of these 128 wells with conduction gel. The electrodes are able to pick up signals from the posterior cingulate, part of a brain network linked to memory and emotion. This is all just picking up electrical signal from the top of your head. Since attending the mindfulness retreat, I'd been meditating daily and was curious to see if it had an impact on my brain. We're going to have you start with thinking of something that was very anxiety-provoking for you. Okay. When I thought about something stressful, the cells in my brain's posterior cingulate immediately started firing, shown by the red lines that went off the chart on the computer screen. Just drop into meditation. Okay. When I let go of those stressful thoughts and refocused on my breath, within seconds the brain cells that had been firing quieted down, shown by the blue lines on the computer. That's really fascinating to see like that. Dr. Brewer believes everyone can train their brains to reach that blue mindfulness zone, but he says all the technology we're surrounded by makes it difficult. If you look at people out on the street, if you look at people at restaurants, nobody's having conversations anymore. They're sitting at dinner looking at their phone. 
because their brain is so addicted to it. You really think there's something in the brain that's addicted to that? Well, it's the same reward pathways as addiction, absolutely. I'm, you know, on mobile devices all day long, and I feel like I could go through an entire day and not be present. And what's that like? It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. So all of this is leading to a societal exhaustion. The irony is many of the people responsible for creating the gadgets that distract us are themselves practicing mindfulness. More than 2,000 people from companies like Google, Facebook, and Instagram showed up earlier this year in San Francisco for a mindfulness conference called Wisdom 2.0. Please welcome our guests. Karen May is a Google vice president, and that's Shade Main Tun, a former engineer who's become kind of a mindfulness guru. As could only happen at a place like Google, his actual title is Jolly Good Fellow which nobody can deny. <laughs> <laughs> so what does a jolly good fellow do? My job description is to enlighten minds, open hearts, and create world peace. That's your job description? That's my job description. I've heard that at some meetings at Google, you actually start out with moments of silence. We do. How long do you sit there quietly for? It's literally a minute or two of noticing your breathing calming yourself down, being present, and then you're able to go into the meeting, the business at hand, with a little bit more focus. Does it make people more productive? Yes, it does. When the mind is unagitated, when the mind is calm, that mind is most conducive to creative problem solving. To innovate. Correct. And one of the powers of mindfulness is the ability to get to that frame of mind on demand. So, along with their free health clubs and other company perks, Google now offers their 52,000 employees free lessons in mindfulness. In the middle of stress, in, when everything's falling apart, you can take one breath. You know, I can imagine some people rolling their eyes and saying, oh, come on, of course, Google, you guys have tons of money, and there's massage therapists walking around and, and all sorts of nice things for employees, but it just doesn't seem practical. The advantage of this is it actually doesn't cost anything and it doesn't take much time. And you believe it really works? I, I absolutely believe it works. After nearly four decades of teaching mindfulness, John Kabat-Zinn is happy to see it hitting the mainstream. But if you're starting to think mindfulness is something you should start practicing, he says you may be missing the point. It's not a big should. It's not like, oh, I got it. Now one more thing that I have to put in my life. Now I have to be mindful, you know. And if it becomes that one more thing they got to do after they, they take the yoga class. Just don't they... do it. Don't do it. It's not a doing at all. In fact, it's a being. And being doesn't take any time. Anderson Cooper tells how mindfulness changed his life. Go to 60MinutesOvertime.com. Sponsored by Pfizer.